I will shalom again. This will be the, probably the final portion of this part of the series right here on the Book of the Seven Seals. Now, we've touched on some of the basic elements of revelation, of Rastafari in prophecy and revelation of the King of Kings, of what does the, I think we touched earlier on elders, you understand the meaning of elder, focusing on Revelation 5.5, 5, we went into the verse, touch on other, other elements of it that need to be understood, both in their biblical and scriptural context, and we just touched on seal. So if you're watching this, the part before it is actually addressing what is, what is a seal, the meaning of seal, both from its biblical perspective and its connection with the Senbet or the Shabbat, the, sen, the weekly Sabbath, as well as the annual Sabbath. And we need to do a little more um, study and, and, and teaching on that aspect, that the Sabbath is not just the seventh-day Sabbath, but there is the annual Shabbat. So when we read in the scripture, the Almighty saying that he has given them and given us his Shabbat. You understand? And how we are to remember his Shabbat and keep his Shabbat is both the, the weekly sabbatical, that one-seventh of our time, as well as the annual Shabbat or those seven particular um, days and times and Moedim that take place in three seasons, in, in, in three particular and distinctive season or or the Passover, um, the the harvest, as well as atonement, or what we could call the 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 spring, the fifty days after the spring Pentecost, they are the harvest, the Subai, the Shavua, and then we have the fall festival season, and then there are seven particular days. If you want to know a little bit more about it, check out our um, our holy days at the website www.lojsociety.org. That gives a basic overview, but there's much more that needs to be understood, but at least to get a basic overview. And this particular part of the series of the Book of the Seven Seals is to give one an overview of the Book of the Seven Seals. So here now we're going to continue with what Revelation chapter 5 verse 4 has pointed out to us in the fact that there was no one who was able to read the book. Now we have no one could open the book and look there there on in verse 3. Then we have in verse 4 where no one could open the book to read the book, neither was worthy or able to look there on. Now, we mentioned before Isaiah when we was touching on the seals portion, and we'll try to get through as much as we can in this particular portion of our lecture, but we touched on Isaiah 8 and 16. Now, in Isaiah 8 and 16, it speaks about binding up the testimony. Now, we finally found our, our uh, the Hebrew, um, it's a little bit, a little bit old, but the synagogue, I guess you call the synagogue uh, Nabiyat or Nabim, Nabim, and this is the prophet Yeshayahu, right here, this is Yeshayahu, and inside it has the English and the, the, the Hebrew, the Masoretic or Israel's, Israel's uh, redaction or recession of the Ethiopic scrolls that he received. Yes, Israel was great for Judaism, but what has been left out was the role that the Ethiopians and the Ethiopian Hebrews played in that um, the the return to Judaism after the Babylonian uh, captivity. That's mentioned in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, or Ezra, or Ezra and ne Nehemiah, Ezra and Nehemiah. And, and there's, there's the books of Sutael, Israel of Sutael, which are part of the 15 books um, that consist of the, the Middle Testament, between the Old Testament and New Testament. Now here, just to go over what we had um, touched on before, when we had mentioned about disciples being the Talmudim, disciples being the word for disciples being the Talmudim, we're actually here 
in the Torah so we can look at it. And um, here it says, uh, what, what, slur or slur, te u da, te u da. It says here, te u da chatum, 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 the chatum or chatum, that's the hatim, atim, the seal, that word chatum or chatum. We say the, the um, machetem. Bamarinya and from the Gutas, and then it says Torah or Tawara Torah Be Li Mudai Be Li Mudai Be Li Mudai or Be Li Mudai, and Li Mudai is is disciple here in the the Hebrew of Isaiah. 8 and 16 on the Targum or the Targum translation says, bind up the testimony, seal the instruction. Now, the Hebrew is Torah. Now, in the Hebrew of Isaiah 8 and 16, it says, it says, um, it says uh, Torah. The King James translates it as law. But here in the, in the Hebrew or the Jewish uh, uh, Yeshayahu or Isaiah, it says um, the instruction. So we have Torah from the Hebraic root. Bamarinya. It also says it also says um, my law or Higian, right? Um, and here it says um, instruction. So the Torah, which is the first of the seven seals, is the foundation. It is the instruction. That's what's so interesting. That Torah is connected with the beginning of discipleship. And this is why we have been focusing so much emphasis with our teachings and these vlogs and videos and other um, dissemination of our divine heritage and our ancient Ethiopian culture. So now the footnote down here says, bind, seal, God's address addresses Isaiah as in verse 11, testimony, instruction, the evidential and practical elements. So the evidential and practical elements are testimony and instruction or testimony, the miskar and the, the, the hig or the Torah, the Torah. The evidential and practical elements respectively in the revelation, in the revealing concerning the coming troubles and dangers. This is directly from the footnote down here. Now, when we get to disciples, and the Hebrew, as we said, it says, Be li mu da ye. Be li mu dai, or we would repoint the vowels to say, Be li mu dai. Be li mu dai. But they have here, I think the Ashkenazi voweling, um, nuka here, has it as a, as a be, or they might say, Ve. They might say, Ve li mu dai. Ve li mu dai in the Ashkenazi pronunciation. But we are Beta Israel, black Jews, not European Jews, so we would prefer to use the Ethiopic to help correct the vowel pointings. Anyway, it says literally taught. The word disciples mean taught. And it puts a little contextuality here where it says the intimate associates, the intimate associates whom the prophet, the Nabi, or some would say in the the Ashkenazi would say Navi, we say Nabi, whom the Nabi uh, taught God's Torah. He taught them God's Torah, God's law, his instruction, and to whom he imparted his message, to whom he imparted his message. Now, it's important to make reference to this particular note right here in um, Isaiah 8. Chapter 8. Now, there's a little paragraphical here where the prophet entrusts his disciples, what we call before Talmudim, or here, uh, uh, Limudai, the Limudai, those who are taught, that he, he entrusts his disciples with a written and sealed record of his instruction. He entrusts to his disciples with a, both a written and a sealed record. A sealed record, you know, where this is memorialized. There, there's evidence of his instruction 
and thereby initiates them, thereby initiates them into an inner circle of a religious fraternity, of a religious fraternity or religious brotherhood. And this is at the root, this is the cornerstone of this society, of the line of Judah society of his imperial majesty. So now when we put this together from the scripture, what the Almighty said was his will and revealed it through the prophets, and we now look at our own walk, we have to answer rightly and honestly and factually, are we in that light and in that example? Are we building on Torah? This is why we keep saying the Torah is so very important, and especially to the Christian. You know, those who say, I'm, I'm of Christ, uh, I'm not Jewish, but I like to understand Christ. Remember what Christ himself said, what the Moshiach himself said. He says, you do err. You understand? In other words, you do err not knowing the scriptures or the power of God. And he says, um, you worship that which you know not. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of the Lion of Judah. Salvation is of the Lion of Judaism. In other words, the Jewish way or the Judaic way, the Yehuda way, is the way that our Lord and Savior, our black Lord and Savior, Adonenu, Yehoshua HaMoshiach, that he approves of. But now we have a connection now. Even when we look into the, the prophets, the Nabim, we have a foundational connection right here in Old Testament script, scriptures, such as the prophets, and in particular in the book of Isaiah or the prophecy, the Tinbete Isaiah, right here. So it says that the prophet, in verses 16 to 18, he is entrusting his disciples or his limudai with a written and a sealed record of his instruction or of God's instruction of his Torah and thereby initiates them. This is where the, the true initiation for true discipleship of the King of Kings and his Christ, of, the, of Hashem, the true and living God in the name of the Moshiach, Yehoshua, begins, you understand, with Torah, with the basic foundation. That's the starting point, initiating them into an inner circle into the inner circle, that discipleship is the inner circle of a religious or rather a spiritual fraternity. And the fraternity is the Wenda Mamach, you understand, or Wenda Mamach Net Machiber, you understand, and the line of Jewish society, Yehuda Moa Andesa Machiber, that word society, you understand, it comes from the root of, of, of brotherhood and, and union or Chibret. As David began to rule from Hebron or Hebron or Kebron, where, where it has the Hebret, Hebre, it also links with Hebrew. That word Hebret, Machiber, Hebrew, Hebri, Ibri, it comes from that same root and foundation. So, let us touch on Isaiah for a moment, and within the amount of time that we have in this part, we probably will have to continue it in another part, but we know that we have a time, a, a, a time factor at this present time. We, this is probably like maybe the third, third or so. We're in the third hour of, of this extended lecture right here, which is still on the book of the seven seals, the Metzha the Metzahaf Kedus, the book of the seven seals, or literally, book holy, scripture holy, holy scripture. So what I'm going to do right here within our remaining, the remaining time that we have in this portion is touch on a couple of biblical scriptural verses and places that the disciples, those who are taking the discipleship seriously, get your Get your composition, your journal, your study journal, or your composition notebook, and take down these verses and try to spend a little bit of time reading it and researching these verses and, and meditate and pray for wisdom of how these verses come together and they give us an Old Testament foundation to the revelation of his imperial majesty in and through the Metzhaf Kedus in and through this book right here, the book of the seven seals, the Metzahafi 
and do sin. There you see the seven seals right there in gold of his imperial majesty, all right, of his imperial majesty, all right? Now, our printing and publication of this book, the introductory, the introductory um, preliminary notes, which actually are, in a sense, a basic, a basic, uh, a basic introduction, a basic, and this is this book right here, and you can see the illumination that we chose for the cover, where you see the the image of God as that gray-haired or ancient of days, holding the scripture for the symbolic lamb, the lamb of God as though he were slain. That's actually Revelation 5 and 6, the next verse after conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Moan, Bethlehem, Neged, Yehuda. And you can see the book right there the open book, and here you can see the, the angels, those in heaven, those in the true church, the true Christina, and right here, and this is the cover. So this illumination is a very important um, illumination as well because, as we have showed, the revelation of the Ancient of Days, even according to that image, we also have an actual manifestation in Abu Kadus and through Abu Kadus. So that was uh, the visual illumination, and this is an actual picture. So Yahai, Yahai, Jaliv, you understand? Jaliv, children, yeah. So you see the illumination and the actualization. Here's the actualization, all right? So we see God the Father, we see the Lamb, we see the open book, and here we see our Godfather, Abba Kedus. All right? So now let's go through some of these verses right here. So what we're going to put on, on, the, on the board at this present time, uh, let's put this on the board right here, is what was the first word we want to deal with book? We want to deal with the word book or metzhaf. And this is this word right here, book. Right? Also, it means uh, scripture. For the limitation of space, take down these particular verses. Now, we have a Cruden's concordance right here. This is a rather old Cruden's concordance. In fact, the cover has come off, so we can just hold up the cover right here. So you can see this is an old Cruden's concordance. But it's, um, it's well worn. But, but the contents of it, somehow when I read some of these old, older books, you understand, going back to the 19th, 18th, even 17th century, it's almost like some of them, even the Gentiles, were, were, were diligent and were, were trying, trying much more than they are today. You understand, they're crying because judgment time, it, judgment time is coming pretty soon. But if they can suspend the reality in people's hearts and minds, this is how when we talk about the iniquity of the Amorites, that 400 years has passed, but the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full because time is not a linear thing, as many would be lie. But here on the book, we looked up book first, and there's a couple of verses in Isaiah that before we uh, uh, run out of time in this recording, we want to give you Isaiah. Isaiah, go to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 29. Read Isaiah chapter 29 and pay careful attention to verse 11, verse 12, verse 18. Also in Isaiah, um, there is chapter 30, verse 8, and also in Isaiah, there is chapter 34 and 16. Chapter 34, verse 16, but begin off of Isaiah chapter 29, 11, or well, begin with Isaiah chapter 29, but pay careful attention to verse 11 verse 12, and verse 18. Now, here in the Crudence, it says book, for book, right? For book. What does it say for book? It says a written record. Remember, let's remember what we just read in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16, and that paragraphical right there, verses 16 to verse 18, what we read over where the prophet is giving is giving an initiation to his um, limudai or to his um, Torah students, those who are learning the Father's instructions, God's instructions. This is what it means when it talks about to learn of God.
you understand, to be taught, and they will be taught of Adonai or Adoni. They will be taught of the Lord. And we see a manifestation of that in New Testament time with Yehoshua HaMoshiach, because he was referring to the written record, but clarifying what had become confused in the so-called post-Babylonian exile uh, Jewish or, or Hebrewish um, religion, you understand, religious establishment. It, so a book is a written record in some permanent form. Ancient books were written on clay tablets, as in Assyria, on sheets of paper fastened together and usually rolled in one or two sticks. Now, what's interesting right here is they don't want to say, well, they say clay tablets as in Assyria, but they don't want to say papyrus and sheets of papyrus. Well, from papyrus, we get paper that come from ancient Egypt, and Egypt's root is in ancient Ethiopia. So there's that uh, Eurocentric um, Anglo-European bias still to Egypt and the connection of Egypt to Ethiopia because it signals and signifies black people, you understand? And it's their mental, spiritual psycho psychosis because they want to avoid these facts. And it becomes clear and obvious when you start to read some of these things, because how come they didn't say on sheets of paper as in Egypt that were fastened together and usually rolled on one or two sticks? Or of parchment in like form. Rarely, sheets were fastened together somewhat like our books. There are examples where the sheets were fastened together in a similar way, a similar way to how we have books today. The word book is sometimes used merely, or used merely meaning record of any sort. So this is important, too, that a book is a record. So we have scripture here. We put scripture here in the, in, in the sense or the idea of book because this is sometimes interchangeable. But let us add right here record. Record. You know what record is? You know what it means to record? You understand? You know what it means to erase? You know, record or erase? Now imagine something that you, somebody destroy your record. You understand? Suppose somebody erased over your recording something that is precious, like a one-of-a-kind, something coming from a loved one to you, and they try to erase that. What are they trying to do? They're trying to damage your memory as well as change or alter your both present reality, but more damaging your futures. You understand? Damaging your futures. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because half the story hasn't been told, has been suppressed. And that's why so many are depressed and suppressed. And, and did I say repressed? You understand? And hard-pressed and, and down-pressed. And you can probably add a couple more pressings of that. We live in very times of pressure, for sure. A lot of pressing is going on. But the Almighty will press out all these things, you know, you know, and make the and make the and make the way straight, and make the way straight. So there are also references where Christ speaks about. Often he would ask them, "Haven't you read? Haven't you read it written?" You know, there's there's cases like Mark 12 and 26 where he speaks about the Book of Moses and and and, and how it's read in the Book of Moses, and also in um. And I think it's John's gospel where he spends those, I think, 40 or so days with his, with his uh, limudai or with his students, you understand? And he's teaching them the, the, the law of Moses or Torah, um, the Psalms of David and, and the prophets. These are three of the seals. Those were three of the seals right there. Now, we talked about Tanakh before. And Tanakh is also three of those seals, but the name is, is, is very forced and arbitrary, Tanakh, and we touch a little bit on that particular matter. Now, in the time that we have here, um, let us touch on chapter 29. Let's see how much of chapter 29 we can get into at this present time. Chapter 29. 
Now, there's a lot of highlights we have here, and we would like to even go through each one of them and, and, and share a little bit on it. Uh, but Chapter 28 is also kind of important, too, because it kind of gives a, a, a fourth taste of, of the Nabah Bait, the, the, the house of reading. And in just Chapter 28, let's just go through this. Chapter 28, um, it says right here, this is the, the woe of Ephraim, or the Afros, you understand the Afra, the Afra, Afro-American, African, Caribbean, the Afars of, 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 of the East, too, the prediction of the Syrian captivity of Ephraim. And then as you go through this particular chapter, it, it, it speaks and it says in verse 9, whom shall he teach knowledge? In other words, who is worthy to learn this gnosis or gnosis of the Metaf Kedus? of his majesty, the book of the seven cities. You remember what it says in Revelation 5, 5, who was worthy? Nobody was found worthy. And, and, and Johannes took this so much to heart that he, he, he wept bitterly. He didn't just weep, but he wept bitterly because of that. You understand? And because he knew the importance of the scripture and the word and that record. You understand? That record. So that record was erased. It was, it was suppressed. You understand? It was hidden. You understand? Especially in Europe. You understand? In Europe, and this is the whole Protestant Reformation, is based on this suppression of the Word of God. But now we find in Ethiopia this, this printing and this process of education was done freely and was a God-given blessing or barakat through our King of Kings, our Godfather, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, when he was that prince, Rastafari, bringing in that printing press in order to increase Amharic literacy, to increase literacy. And literacy is that basic thing that one's need. Because once one can read and write, one, and they have books, they, they can become autodidacts. In other words, they can become self-taught. They can teach themselves. A good example on one level is, is Malik al-Hajj al-Shabazz, known as Malcolm X. You understand? Because he was able to learn how to read and even read the dictionary. He was able to teach himself. And we see how this man, this black man's life turns around 180 degrees. And thanks uh, is, is worthy to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, someone who's always uh, suppressed or depressed within the Western media and among the apostate Negroes, the apostate niggers. Anyway, being that as it may, whom shall he teach knowledge, question, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine, who shall he make to understand the Timaharit, who shall I not make to understand the teachings of his majesty, them that are weaned from the milk, so the weaning from the milk means that they put on the milk, you see, and, they, and they've had milk to the full, in other words, now they can, um, they can, their body can manufacture its own proteins. You understand the teeth and other things has developed, and they can derive protein out of other food. But babies are not able to do that initially, so they're put on the paps. They're put on the mama's breast in order for them to derive that nutrient, that protein that they need, so their bones can, can grow. And the bones symbolize the structure. You know, we can touch on uh, uh, Eve coming from the so-called rib of Adam, but when properly understood, came from his structure. And now we break that down to the DNA, you know, and we, we, we see that example. It's still a structure. The idea of the bones is structure. So the basic teachings are like the milk, you know, are like the milk. And some have analogized the Bible, the New Testament, the Old Testament as the two breasts, almost like the two breasts of God, you know, as a mother in that sense, that the Old and the New Testament, in order to get the basic structure, and are drawn from the breast, and those who are now drawn from the breast, so they've been on the breast, they've developed good bones, they're growing, you understand, they end up being born again, you become a child, not born big, but, and then you grow, you understand, that's why the Bible and Paul, Hawaii Apollo teaches that the law, or Torah, he says, is our schoolmaster to bring us to Moshiach, to bring us fully to Messiah, both to the Messiah objectively, the Amen, and to bring in us and bring out of us that subjective faith or the Imnet, the Imnet. Now, verse 10 says, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept. 
That means when we go through the Hahu, you understand the Hahu, he, or the Abu Gida, or the basic Fidel, precept is upon precept. You understand? After, uh, after Ed doesn't come O, but after Ed come U, E, I, A, E, O. So it, it's a, there's a foundation, there's a structure, there's an there's a order. So the instruction is to help gain one's structure so one can recognize the need and importance for that structure. It's like being a chemist and you don't know the periodic table, you know, the 99 elements, so forth and so on. So precept must be upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Each line, this line, the first hoi, laue, halt. Was that the and and on and on line upon line here a little and there a little here a little and there a little we have two particular charts for instruction the basic fidel chart or the old is form as well as the Abu Gida which is a more Hebraic form Aleph Be Gimel Daleth was that the so forth and so on and it says for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people? So with stammering lips, speaking prophetically of this particular one that the Bible is, is forth seeing, and with another tongue, will he speak to this people? To whom he said, this is the rest wherein ye may cause the weary to rest. It's like what his master said concerning the gospel.